One of the hardest working pieces in a winter wardrobe is the wool coat. So in today's video, I'm going to review seven different wool coats, talk about the quality of fabric, the fit and the versatility of each of these coats, and do a bit of a comparison between these different styles. My requirement for today's video is that the wool coat needs to have at least 50% wool. And then I'm also looking for longer coats as opposed to short or cropped. It's so important to look for a coat that suits our lifestyle because it's literally the thing that will tie all of our outfits together and it's also the most visible piece in a winter outfit. And then when it comes to quality, a wool coat is probably the most heavily worn item in our wardrobe and because of that, it will show the wear and tear a lot quicker, especially if we don't choose the right option. I think we'll start today with the three coats that are actually in my collection. So you can see my preferences and then we'll experiment and look at the three I've ordered to review in today's video. My most worn, most loved coat is the classic coat from The Curated and I'm wearing the size medium. I will usually say my true size in the extra small and I went two sizes up and this is what gives me my perfect fit when it comes to this coat. If I go for my true size, it's honestly too small. It doesn't wrap enough, which I find to be a deal breaker because I need my coat to have that ability to wrap so I can be warm. So this coat is 70% wool, 30% cashmere. And having worn this coat for two winters, the fabric looks exactly as it did that day I received it. One of the perks of the curated coats is that they come with extra fabric. So you can actually go to a tailor and use that fabric to create loops, customize to where you want it to be. I have never used this function because honestly, the height of the belt strap doesn't bother me. But if it did, that's something that you can definitely customize with this coat. This coat is also double faced, meaning that you've got the wool fabric on both the outside and the inside. This means that you don't need a lining and it makes the coat incredibly soft and comfortable to wear. On the shoulders, there is a little bit of shaping with the seam here, and then it just drops down and super comfortable. We've got room here, so we can do a bit of layering in the autumn winter. Not all coats are designed to do this, and I'll talk about it in some of my later coat reviews. Ever since I got this coat, it's been by far my most worn coat, and a lot of that comes down to the style and the shape of the piece. So when it comes to length, I think this coat suits a lot of heights. I am 5'3", 160 centimeters. My friend is about 5'6", 7", but we both really like the length, and I think it suits us both really well. If you're petite or if you're taller, I don't think you have too much to worry about for this coat. With two sizes up, the only thing I have to think about as a petite person is that I have to cuff in the sleeves slightly and I guess that's the only place where it shows um, that I've sized up. This coat is called the classic coat for a reason. I think that all of the details feel very balanced on the piece. None of the lapels are too sharp or too large. Everything feels like it fits very, very well. The curator is currently doing a 30% sale. I don't think it includes any of their classic coats, but it does include this sweater I'm wearing. This one is made from 100% cashmere. I purchased it, I think, two years back, and it's just one of those very classic cashmere sweaters, but this one is a bit thicker and more substantial than your typical cashmere crew. I did purchase this sweater as well as the classic coat myself. Um, these were pieces that I have just loved the look of and ordered for my wardrobe. Another coat I had from the curated is the London coat. This one was very, very kindly sent to me. And I think it's because I had just like raved and loved the other coat I purchased so much. This one is made from 90% wool, 10% cashmere. So that one is actually 70% wool, 30% cashmere. I don't feel any real differences in the fabric. They feel pretty much the same. Um, to the hand. For this coat, definitely do not size up. Go for your true size and you will already have an oversized look. Other than the difference in composition, the quality is exactly the same as the classic coat and I can't see any differences really. So I'll talk more about the style differences, which is really what sets these two apart. We'll start with the pockets because I noticed this one immediately. On the classic coat, you've got the more simple style pocket where it's kind of just um, two rectangles. And on this one, you've got a more seamless pocket and it's a little bit more hidden um, and maybe a little bit more sleek. Everything about this coat is just a little bit bigger and sharper. So you can see that in the lapels, they're much bigger than the classic coat and they're also a little bit sharper in shape. I'll hold it up so you can see literally twice the size and a lot more angular in the way it's shaped. The coat is more roomy. You can see how much room there is. We really didn't have that for the classic coat. And for this one, it's the extra small, my true size, and it wraps a lot more than the classic coat that was a size medium. We've got a button closure here, and then we've also got the belt. So two ways of closing. 
Whereas with the classic coat, there was no closure and you just had the belt. On my petite height, the sleeves actually fit decently well. Pretty happy with that length. And then the coat is also longer than the classic style. If I had to choose between these two coats, my decision is really easy. I would definitely go for the classic coat. And the reason I would go for that one is because it's more of a casual, simple style. If you looked at your lifestyle and it leans more casual, I think that is the better coat. A little bit shorter, the design is more simple, it looks more casual. And I think if you're petite, that coat does fit a bit better. Those are the decisions I will base it on, height, and then also how formal your everyday lifestyle is. The final coat that's in my collection before we move on to the others is this one from Petite Studio. I recently did work with them for my Styling Secrets for Petite Women video, but this coat is made from the most beautiful blend of fabric. It's 80% wool, 10% alpaca, 10% silk. The composition here really just speaks for itself. It is beautiful in quality, and this coat comes in both this beige color as well as a grey. You've got that double face wall on most of the coat and then you've got a little bit of lining at the top. For me personally, I could do without it. I don't mind if it's just the raw material on the inside. I actually quite like it. This coat is from Petite Studio, so obviously designed for someone who is about 5 foot 3, my height or under. If you find a lot of coats too long, then this is a gem. Even if you are very petite, I think it will still fit you around mid-calf and not too long. On me, it hits me basically just below the knee. That's a pretty good length coat, meaning that I can wear it with pretty much anything and have the outfit look fairly proportional and balanced. Whereas with very long coats, I do have to think about how to balance the look and make it feel more flattering or more versatile. When we think about the versatility of this coat, I do think that it combines the functionality of the last two. Unlike the classic coat, this one is a bit more finished. You know, it's got the buttons, it's got the hidden pockets. The details are a bit more polished, but it also isn't too sharp, too oversized like the London coat either. We're kind of somewhere in between and I do think this is a good coat to basically wear for any occasion. Now let's move on to the coats I'm testing for today's video. Mango is one of those brands where I don't necessarily love their quality, but a couple of years back, would have been five now, I purchased the coat from Mango when I was in Italy because I underpacked, and it was honestly such a good coat. It's this one. I've had it for all these years. I've worn it for every winter since, and for the first maybe two or three, it was my daily coat. So I wanted to test in today's video whether that quality is still there and whether it holds up. This coat is 70% wool and then 30% synthetic, which I think for this price bracket is quite good. You might be able to find better, but there are also a lot that is much worse in that it will be completely synthetic. Finding a coat that suits our lifestyle is so important. So all my coats I'm showing today tend to be a little bit more loose and relaxed. This coat here is much more tailored on the shoulder. There's not that much room here, which means I can't layer thick knits inside. This coat is designed to wear something a little bit thinner on the inside, or a lightweight knit and put this over the top in a very polished type of outfit. It's not designed for cozy looks or casual dressing. This is one of the number one things I look at. This won't work for my lifestyle. This was honestly one of the better coats I saw, which is why I ordered this piece. But to be honest, the fit doesn't really cut it. Firstly, the sleeves are too long and it requires me to roll it up quite a bit. Secondly, while it fits on the shoulder, it's far too tight on this area and I'm wearing a light knit on the inside. The good news is that where it gapes is where the belt is. So you can tie it up and basically hide it. In the cutaways, I think I can make this coat look very, very nice because when you're not moving, it's great. But the moment you move, you sit down, I think that you get a lot of gaping and bunching and it doesn't actually look as good as if you were just to stand there and not move. Sadly, I don't think this coat is really doing it for me and it just doesn't have the functionality and the comfort that I need from my coat. When it comes to the fabric, if I compare it to all the other coats so far, it is definitely rougher, but I would have expected that because even the mango coat I really love, it is rougher in texture. When it comes to competing brands like Cos and Lover Stories, when they do wool coats, I find the wool coats a lot nicer and softer compared to this mango one. I've been thinking a lot about what is actually classic because last season there were all these oversized drop shoulder coats which to me was honestly quite classic. Now the trend has swayed to more tailoring, um, sharper lines and you'll notice now that all of the high street more trendy stores 
are selling coats like this. I think it's so important to understand lifestyle and then also what shapes fit you the best because when you look at the shops, it's always trend driven. This coat here is 53% wool. We've got 29% viscose and then the rest is like a blend. I think the fabric feels pretty good. You can definitely still feel a little bit of coarseness. It's not as soft as the curated or Petit Studio ones, but it's pretty good. This coat is also completely lined on the inside. Onto the details, you can already see that this coat has a very strong shoulder. We've got a little bit of padding here um, just to bring more shape to the shoulder line. It's very suited to someone who works in an office, wants to look very sleek, as opposed to casual or effortless. We've got a beige mulled fabric and it's got a bit of striping on the material as well. I love the look of this. I think it looks really fresh for autumn winter. We tend to think of very dark colors. It's nice to see a lighter, brighter shade. My honest review of this coat is that if I was working in a corporate office, if I was running around the city in meetings and working a nine to five job, I would love this coat. I think it looks so professional, so sleek. I feel very like work ready in this coat. But again, lifestyle wise, it doesn't fit with mine. I think I will look a bit crazy doing some of the things I do with this coat on just because it's such a dramatic statement shape. In terms of the underarm area, it's the same as the last mango coat. This is not a coat designed for you to wear a chunky knit inside. It's a coat that I think is designed for you to wear a blouse or a light knit. I'm honestly a little bit disappointed with mango coats. I really thought I was going to find something really great in that first coat I showed and that it will be similar to the one that I love so much, but it didn't really quite meet my expectation in fit or fabric. This is the Cezanne Metaric coat. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's the most beautiful coat I have seen in a long time. This coat is 100% wool, double face, and immediately it's just got all the things I love. Natural fiber, and it doesn't have any of that lining on the inside. This material I'm noticing is just a little bit thicker as well, so it really does give you that additional warmth with the fabric. It's again, similar to the curated, similar to Petit Studio, you no longer feel the scratchiness of the wool. Instead, it just feels plushy and soft, and this is a 100% wool. If you're looking for a colored coat because you already have a black or a navy, this is the perfect shade of green. It's not too bright where you can't match it with a lot of colors. This has got that perfect vibrancy but also wearability. I'm kind of obsessed with the idea of wearing this colored coat with a brick red or red lipstick and this is a bit of a dream combination for me. Now let's take a look at the details. When you look at the collar and the lapels, it's very small. This is very similar to my curated classic coat. And I love this because it feels a little bit more balanced, especially if you're petite. I guess the reason I like this coat is because it's got a lot in common with the curated style. With the pockets, we've got the very visible rectangular pockets, um, similar to the navy coat style. No button closure, no zip. It's the same with the curated coat. This is my true size and it wraps around about the same as the curated medium coats on me. If you went true to size for the curated, you wouldn't have this amount of wrap whereas you do get that even with your true size for this style this coat is a little bit more finished and more detailed than the curated one so i guess an example is the buttons on the sleeve just got this tortoise shell button around both cuff looks a little bit more intentional than the simple sleeve of the curated with the belt loops the curated gives you the fabric so you can adjust it i've never used that function so i kind of do like the fact that they've just got the belt loops already attached with the shoulder lines also a little bit different i think it's a bit more defined here whereas with the curated one it kind of is more invisible and there's no visible seam there and then in terms of width and what you can layer inside it's the same as the curated you can definitely put in a chunky and knit and you'll be fine. I got this coat just to review for today's video and then I was going to send it back. But this is the most beautiful coat I've ever seen. I love the color so much that um, I think I'm keeping it. I just got the final coat I wanted to talk about in today's video. So there are seven coats today that I'm reviewing instead of six. This one is a 100% wool coat from Anne Lover Stories. This coat is 100% wool and it is lined. And I think compared to a lot of the coats I'm showing today, um, this one is noticeably thicker. Because it's also got the lining, I do find this coat very, very warm. I would recommend this fabric with the fully lined interior if you live somewhere that definitely has a true winter and it gets quite cold. The hand feel of this coat compared to the other coats is a little bit more like a boucle texture. If I show you up close, maybe you can get a feel for it. It feels like wool boucle, very textured um, and maybe just slightly rougher than some of the other coats I'm showing. These are all very smooth in texture, whereas this is definitely 
um, a little bit nubby in the way that it feels. I don't think it's that itchy or scratchy material. It's just rougher like boucle. I would best compare the shape of this coat to the London coat because it's got the slightly more oversized lapels and details. It's a little bit of a longer length, but I still feel like it's not as oversized in width as the London coat. By the time I've got a few layers inside, there really isn't that much additional room. Whereas with the London, um, there was still plenty of space. I'm so warm right now in this coat. And because of that heavier, warmer material, I think that it can look a little bit more bulky than some of the other coats. Nothing too extreme, but just a little bit more bulky in the way that it fits. I do like the length of the coat. I think it's not too overwhelming, even though I'm more petite. So if you're around my height or taller, I don't think you'll find any issues with the length. Sometimes with coats, I am a bit worried that it will go all the way to my ankles. Whereas this coat still hits in that mid to low calf area. I went for the extra small, which is my true size. And I probably wouldn't size down on this coat just because even though it looks oversized, there's not that much room once I've put on a few layers. So I personally wouldn't go smaller because I think you'll start to fit a little bit too tight around the shoulders. Um, and around the body. Price point wise, the best way to compare this coat would be with the mango coat. And these are such different coats in quality. The mango coat really does feel so much more flimsy compared to this one. This is a coat that feels really sturdy. It does feel like it will last very well. And the material, since it's already quite textured, I think will hold up extremely well. And then the mango coat, in comparison, I think do feel a lot cheaper compared to this one. My favorite thing about this coat is that it looks very chic and luxurious on. I love the shape of it and it's also very, very warm. To the hand, I wouldn't say this is the softest. The Cezanne, the Curated, the Petit Studio coat, they're all a little bit smoother, softer. But this material still feels very durable and strong. I think that it will hold up quite well if you were to wear it day in, day out. And before I forget, this coat comes in tons of colors. So you don't just have gray, you've got navies, you've got creams, um, tons of neutral tones, if this navy isn't really your thing. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Because we're in this Black Friday, Cyber Monday phase, I will link to all of the sales down below for you to check out, whether that's the curated or petite studio or any other sales I find. Oh, of course, for downsizing, as well as links to everything I'm wearing in today's video down below as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.